Good afternoon, everyone. I actually said good morning previously. Um, so Nwabi spoke about briefly actually um, introduced my topic, which is skills development. I'm going to share a presentation with you. Um, if I can just share it on the screen before I start talking. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the screen yet. Yes, we can, Fifi. Okay. So um, my topic is around skills development and innovative and mindful solution for businesses. So what we're going through right now with COVID-19, a lot of things have changed. Um, a lot of the normal ways of doing things are evolving and changing um, to different ways of doing things. And businesses have kind of either come to a stop, a halt, or come to a position where they actually need to uh, redefine themselves and actually find themselves in the new in the new normal that is happening and there's actually gaps in between in with regards to skills and and skills is just basically looking at the things that people are able to do in order for your business to move forward so a lot of businesses are realizing that a lot of things that we've been doing in a particular way have changed and um or they are changing and one thing that i found so profound was with COVID 19 um, the virus itself actually mutates, which means if it gets into, if, if you get infected with, with the virus, um, it, it, it shows different symptoms to the next person and the next person and the next person. And that is exactly what it's doing to businesses. We all have different kinds of businesses. We're all um, trading and, and, and working in different platforms and different industries and, and, and different um, environments. And this pandemic is affecting us differently. Each one has a different symptom. And what then do we need to do in order for us to, to, to cope and, and, and actually move forward from this? One, um, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview on, on, on what you can do when it comes to skills development and purposeful learning. So when we talk about skills development and training and purposeful learning, you need to look at your business and say, what is it that is changing? What is it that is Difference. What is it that I cannot do the way I did before? That is now assessing the need. So you assess the need and you realize, okay, these are the skills perhaps that I require, or this is the type of, um, it could be anything. It could be a product, it could be skills, it could be anything. Once you've identified that, you kind of know what are the outcomes that I want from this and how am I supposed to get to that? And within your business, it's important to identify the, the very same people that are within your business. Those, that is your human capital. Those, that, those are your assets. And within those assets, it's important to develop them. So you identify the employees or, or business partners or people that are working with you and the suitable ones that can help you to get to the next level. By teaching them, your business can grow because skills development has very many benefits which I'll speak to um, on my next slide. But your next step after you've identified your candidates is to actually apply what you've, what you've discovered in terms of the skills that are required and um, the learning that needs to take place. You allow that to take place and you, you become mindful of how you, you, you do that with your employees. How, how do I teach uh, Zanele how to use a computer, an example? And because Zanele now knows how to use a computer, she can then trade on, online for me, depending on the kind of business. And then you will assess and monitor. There's monitoring and evaluation. Now, this is a, a normal, I've tweaked it a bit, but it's a normal training life cycle, which as, as, a, as a skills development specialist, we, we focus on those five criteria. And when I said that there are benefits of training and learning, if you... If you focus on skills development, there's, there's an obvious sustainable growth and development for your, for your company. Um, you improve your employees' morale. So once you teach people resilience, um, it improves productivity. You teach them a different skills, it improves productivity. It improves your level of, um, in terms of you, your, your advantage. You, 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 you become, you are at another level when it comes to competitive advantage because you have evolved your business in, by, by, um, 
by um, applying skills or teaching skills that are required in your industry and in your business currently. And it actually helps to retain the skills. Retention of skills, um, often people look at reward as a form of retention, which it is. But I also think that we need to start focusing on skills development as a form of retention. Once you teach people and you see, you see them as, as a capital asset in your business, they will remain with the business and they will focus and be committed to the business. As much as we are afraid of losing, people are afraid of losing their jobs currently, businesses should also be afraid of losing the skills. Because once you have lost the skills, it means you lose a part of your business. So that is where your return on investment comes in, where the, the employer or the business owner invests in an employee, but they get back so much more in terms of the morale, the energy in the business, the, the commitment from the employees and the skills that they're actually willing to impart and apply when it comes to the business. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. For me, uh, part of retention is, is, is skills development. Now we've come to an awkward situation, something that we are not used to, which is COVID-19. What do we need to consider when it comes to skills development? We've, we're teaching people the, the practical skills or knowledge on, on, on what is required in the workplace. But what about self-care? I think Nwabi also touched on that. Self-care and health and safety, which I touched on in the previous webinar about the regulations that the government has put in place and things that employees and employers need to put, um, to be mindful of as they go back to work because now we are in a new state of where we were staying at home and now we need to go back to, um, to workplaces and things have changed. So incorporating self-care as a learning tool is very important. That is what builds your resilience. That is what um, gives an overall um, well-being of your employees. It, it plays a critical role in ensuring that your employees are, are, are in, a, in a state of wellness um, and health. And that is something that we need to start promoting in the workplace. Encourage your employees to do small things, small tasks that help them build resilience over time. Um, Nobi mentioned taking walks and breathing. In, your, in lunch times, promote such activities within your workplace such that you encourage employees to be active and be mindful of their body, their mind, their thoughts, and their energy at the time. So once they start taking those small little talks to be off work and actually free themselves from the office or, or whatever environment, they get to a sense of health and a sense of mental wellness or well-being. And um, as, an, as an organization or as a business, you need to just try and create a, a strategy that includes prevention, intervention, and protection, which is exactly what we're doing currently with um, COVID-19 regulations and, um, and the guidelines. We are encouraging people to, as a preventative measure, wear a mask, wash your hands, sanitize. That's a preventative measure. That is incorporated within your business. But are you training or are you, are you allowing your employees or are you yourself as a business owner opening up to the employees to actually be mindful of why they are doing what they do. Why am I washing my hands? Am I mindful when I do go wash my hands? I have a habit of washing my hands and sanitizing. Every time I see a sanitizing spray, I sanitize. And it's something that I don't actually internalize. So it's, it's important to try and promote those things to employees where they actually start to think of what they do and be mindful of how they, of what they do in the workplace and why they are doing what they're doing. Encourage them to live a healthy lifestyle. Plenty, of, drink plenty of water, exercise regularly, live a healthy lifestyle. Those are essential in unlocking a workforce potential. And once you have a, it's, it's often said a healthy workforce is a good workforce, a productive workforce in a sense. So um, during this COVID-19, um, pandemic and, and the current state that we are in. Let's develop appropriate time management strategies to have that work-life balance. People are working at from home, people are working short time, people are working um, shifts. 
Now, the time management initially in some in the traditional business and in the traditional sense, people go to work from eight to five and the, the time is managed by the employer. Now people have to manage their own time. Do they have the time management skills? Are you considering that when you tell them to stay at home and, and work? How are you managing that? You need to develop those appropriate time management skills. How do you align the employee's work to the, the life that they're living at home? They may be looking after children at the same time. So those are things that we need to be mindful of and actually assist the employees in, 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 in doing and not be, I said the last time, we are not trying to be punitive, but we're trying to be supportive in every way. And by um, delegating and collaborating, which is what we've done as a country, we've collaborated. When it came to lockdown, people were, we collaborated, we all stayed at home, we all wear masks, we all know that we're fighting against the same thing, and that ensures a healthy work, work behavior. We've done it as a country. In your workplaces, you need to, to incorporate that as well so that you can decrease stress because it's shared stresses amongst people and people know that this is what we are going through and we're all going through it together. So those are the kind of um, mindful conversations that you need to have with your employees as they go on. Technology has taken over. We are engaging with all of you with technology. We always have our phones on. Everything is always on the go. And we need to promote a culture of, yes, having things on, but disconnect. Have that in your workplace. Have those things. This is all part of managing and promoting a skill within employees. It's a skill of resilience. It's a skill of, of it's a culture that you can, that you can try and grow and, and, and promote within your organization, you need to try and disconnect. Encourage your employees to disconnect. Encourage off times where at night, don't, your laptop is switched off because now is your time. Now is me time for me to sit back, think, plan for today or plan for tomorrow and reflect on today. You know, those are the kind of things that you, you need to start encouraging when it comes to self-care in the workplace. It's not just about COVID-19, I wash my hands, I'm sticking to the regulations, um, the health and safety regulations are one, two, three, but you need to also look after the mental wellness and the mental well-being because there are so many stresses that come with COVID-19 that employers are not, they, they, they seem to not, they probably are, but they seem not to be attending to because it's, we want to make money, we want to be productive, we want performing employees. For you to have performing employees, your employees need to be in a certain, at a certain level of self. Now, if you look at its self-development, its self-care, if one person cares for themselves, if within your organization you've got 12 people, each one has a good energy going, they've got a good energy flowing, they're looking after themselves, it's self-care, self to the next person. So you've got 12 self people who are aware of themselves, aware of who they are. And um, now you've got a culture, an organization that has a full culture of a behavior that has changed. And you yourself, you need to model that as the employee, um, as the employer or as the business owner. After hours, cut the hours of, of, of um, sending emails. Now you've got different kinds of people within your workplace. You need to know, like I said, skills development does not have to be a costly exercise. You can do it yourself as the manager. We've got different platforms that we use and we often, um, people have different ways of learning. There's auditory learners, kinesthetic learners, um, tactile learners. So you teach the employees or the people within your business the new kind of skills. 